Hi, Lori. Hi. Okay, Lori, let me just tell you, I know we're doing um, Boys and Girls. It's one of those days we need to calm down a little bit. Um, I want you to explain an assignment that we're doing um, after your presentation. Maybe you can help us out um, that relates to um, your program. Okay, so before we close off, um, I'll explain it, and then if you want to help them in any way, um, you can. Okay? Okay, so we'll do that at the end? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, today's a little bit bittersweet because um, it's the last uh, lesson of the year with you guys, so I've really enjoyed meeting with you every week and um, answering your questions and sharing with you what we've been doing over here in uh, Gainesville. But I know you guys are all going to have really great summers, and um, I'm sure I'll see you guys at some time after this, um, when I pop in to say hello to my mom's class. So, we, um, the house that we've been following, as you guys remember, we saw from the very beginning when it was just dirt. And now the house is almost complete. Um, the people who bought the house are actually going to be moving into it in uh, two weeks. Okay? So this week, um, what happened in construction is they went ahead and installed the irrigation system. So I'm going to show you that, and I'll show you kind of where the house is at right now, and then tell you what needs to be done um, before the people move in. Share my screen with you. So, most of you guys probably have irrigation in your yards, and what that is, is it's a system of um, water that runs underneath the grass, and little sprinkler heads pop up, so that way they can sprinkle water on the grass and your plants to keep them nice and hydrated and healthy. So, we have the irrigation system under the ground. And what they have to do is they have to dig these little trenches in the dirt and go ahead and they put the water pipes in there. They put uh, pink flags everywhere where they want a sprinkler head to be. And then they dig a little path to each of, of the little heads. Um, you can see they have the pipe. It goes actually underneath the pavers and the sidewalk to make sure the water can get to all the areas in the lawn. So this is a picture of the pipe sticking out from underneath the pavers. See here the pipe is sticking out from the other part of the paver, so this little patch here, which will eventually have some flowers in it, um, can get watered. They mark where all of the wires underground, all the electric wires are in red to make sure that when they're digging they don't hit any of them. And you can see here, here's the guy and he's got a little, kind of like a shovel to make this, um, this ditch here. And he does it around the whole perimeter of the house. And then they take the pipe and the pipe comes in these large tubes and they put them, they line them up next to all the ditches to see where they're needed. And then after they line them up, they go ahead and they put them in the ditches. You can see here they start to put them in. And then they hook them together. So they have these little corner pieces. This is hooking it underneath the pavers and it's hooking two larger pipes together. You can see here he's hooking it to the main um, this is where the water is coming from. This is actually called a backflow preventer. And it stops the water from going backwards back into the pipe, so the water only goes out of the pipes onto your lawn. See here, they, afterwards they fill up all the ditches, they cover it back all up with dirt, but they have all these pink flags here so you know where the sprinkler heads. Up here is the backflow preventer again. And you can see this green box. This is where the electric controls are going to be. 
and eventually there'll be a panel on the wall where you can set when you want the sprinklers to run. So you can set it to automatically run every Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the morning. Or you can pick whichever schedule you want. See here, he's gluing the, uh, the pipes together. He uses a special glue that makes it nice and waterproof. And then, you can see they screw the heads on, and they fill it all up, and then eventually, it just looks like, um, I'll show you what the lawn in the house looks like now. And this is how it looks when it's all done. So it's all nice and flat, they got the little sprinkler heads, the pink, so when they put the grass and they know where it's located. And this is where the house is right now. So it's almost finished. Basically, um, what needs to happen is uh, they need to put in the grass and the plants. And I'll show you a picture of what that looks like. And they need to paint the front door. So when they put in the grass, since this hasn't happened yet, I'm just going to show you a picture of what it looks like. The grass actually gets delivered on pallets, just like how the papers were delivered on pallets. And they grow the grass on like a grass farm, and they cut it up into pe into square pieces, and they deliver it right away so that the grass doesn't die. And then the landscapers go ahead and they lay out the squared patches on your grass on the, your lawn. And eventually they water it, and the grass will all grow together, and you can't even tell where the squ where one square started and the next one ended. So they lay it out in squares. And then wherever you want flowers or trees, the flowers and trees actually come from a nursery. So we go to a nursery and we pick out all the different plants and flowers and trees that they want. And they come delivered in like plastic buckets. And they're placed where we want them to place them. And they dig holes in the dirt, put them in, and, um, and then we cover it with some nice mulch. And I'll show you a picture of one of our houses. This house is actually the house right next door. Um, so this house is right next door to the one that we're building. And you can see here it's nice and landscaped. It's got grass. We've got some, some flowers and bushes. And uh, there's a couple trees too. I can show you another one. This is the house next to that. Um, this house, the grass is planted in the winter, so it's a little bit brown. But you can see how the house looks when they're finished. The doors are painted, and all the grass and flowers are installed. So that's kind of what needs to be done on the outside. They don't paint the door until the very end, because they don't want anyone to mess up the paint when they're working on the house. So I'll show you also on the inside what the house looks like now. So you see this is where it is on the outside, and you remember it started just from a pile of dirt, and you saw the whole thing being built. And this is the backyard, so the backyard will get some grass as well. You've got the, front, the back porch. And then inside the house, you can see the bedrooms still need to have some carpet installed, but otherwise every, the walls are painted. This is the garage, it just needs to be cleaned a little bit. The laundry room, they need to put in the washer and dryer. Bathrooms, the bathrooms just need to be cleaned. Um, you see they have a protective tape on top of the granite so the granite doesn't get damaged. The shower, you can see the shower just needs to be cleaned. So the tiles all installed. Here's a master bedroom. Just need some carpet to be installed. Closets. It's another bedroom. Master bathroom. Bathroom. Here's the kitchen. See how the lights are on. Great room. Another great room. So this is where the house is at. And uh, what I'll do is uh, while you guys are on summer vacation, 
I'll continue to post pictures for the next couple weeks as the house gets completed. So if you guys are curious, you can go online um, onto your class website and you'll be able to see. And also, um, the homeowners who bought the house, they have on the website too, they've left a little message for you as well. And they talked about how they picked out the house and how they're really excited to move in. And just to give you a little preview, so I told you basically everything that needs to happen is the landscaping, the carpet needs to be installed. So you can see here are some pictures of um, that I just found online to show you kind of what it looks like when the carpet's installed. They kind of stretch it and they tack it to the walls, make sure it's nice and stretched out. They put a pad underneath it. And I'll also show you um, the house actually gets tested for energy efficiency. So they have a guy come in and he does all sorts of tests on the house to make sure they're energy efficiency. And he puts all these things uh, over the vents and he puts stuff over the doors. Let me find a good picture here. Here. He puts like these things over the doors and they, they do all sorts of tests to see the energy efficiency of the house. But that's kind of where the house is right now. So you saw this week that irrigation went in and it's kind of what needs to happen left, but there's not too much. Um, people will be moving in before the end of the month. So uh, what questions do you guys have for me? Wait a second, Lori. Um, so I'm going to show them when we're done how we can go on to my website and find the lessons with Lori. Um, and I can't, we can't play it today because it's on YouTube, so the school doesn't permit YouTube lessons to go on. We have a couple of questions today, but let me just tell you a little bit about our assignment. Hold on. What do you mean? Um, um, so what's our piece about energy efficiency? Yeah, there's one on my desk. Um, you see my desk over here? Up there. Um, what um, we are doing is, um, is we are creating, they're creating a development. Um, and we talked about what the development has to, to make it special. Um, and they're creating a name for their development. And so I wanted you to show them your Scoville logo. And then maybe do you have a, a picture of of the land, of a, the, the whole development, so they could see how it's kind of laid out. Because we just yeah. yeah, we discussed okay. it. Let me share my screen with you here again. And what I'm going to do, and I'm going to let's see, we're going to go to uh, the Scoble Homes web. This is something at home that you can go to as well if you want to see examples. And I'm going to go to our communities page. Now each community, you can see here, this is our Scoville Homes logo. So this is the logo for our company. You see on the top it says Scoville Homes, and then there's like a little sun there. Do you see and, that? And each community has its own kind of logo, too. So you can see here, these are some of our... Lori, do you have a picture? Lori, do you have a bigger picture of Scoville Homes icon so they can see it? The logo? Yeah. Let's see. Um, can you see that or is it still small? It's still small. Um, let's see. I can open up it up for you in another window in a minute. But let me show you here are the site plans. So each community, you can see this is Belmont. Each community has its own logo as well. So you can see this is the Belmont logo that's on the actual sign in the front of the community. And you can see here, this is the site plan for the community. Can you guys see that? Uh, see, so you see the houses, how they're arranged. So how you like pool be? Do you see a pool? Yeah, so you'll see here are the roads. The gray is the roads, and then all these little boxes are where a house can be. And they're color coordinated based on which houses are for sale right now, which ones are sold. And then over here, this is where all the amenities are. So all the amenities are in this corner of the development. 
And you can see here there's a pool, there's tennis, there's basketball, there's actually a dog park over here too. On the top left for a little and a playground. So this community put all the amenities in this corner over here. As well as you can see around the community there's a little jogging trail. And there's some also some green grassy areas. How many homes are in, in this development? This development has, um, let's see, it has about 200 homes. Okay, so we're not going to make something that big. Let me show you, I'll show you another, some other communities that we have too. Yeah, we so that's Belmont. Did, did you see how, she didn't have the houses built. Here's Will Oak Plantation. You can see here's another logo for this community, and you can see the site plan here, how we have the roads and the houses, some common areas, and then you've got the pool over here. This is a conservation area for those tortoises that I told you about. Wait a second, Lori. Do you, I just want you to see, so when you're doing a site plan, you see these are just boxes and there's numbers? Those yeah. are house lots. Right yeah. over the pool, and you make you have to make sure there's a road that goes around. So we're gonna just make a small scale. Yeah, let me show you a smaller community that we have. Okay, so you can see this community has 22 lots. See, look at this, 22 lots to put a house. And they're in a circle, okay, so you can drive to everyone's house, and it connects to the main road, and in the center is a little park. There's no pool in this community, but you could put one in, um, and uh, yeah, so this is a smaller community, and it's in a nice circle. So this is what you're going to try to do down here. You're going to have to have some boxes that represents where the houses are going to be, a road, and any of these amenities that you tr that you would like. Good. Look at this um, look at this um logo that they have. A couple of flowers, isn't that pretty? Campo Verde. I'll show you another one. And then we'll answer questions. So you see here, this community has a pool, it has a clubhouse, it has a workout room, this is the clubhouse, it's got a little park, and you can see here, this is the logo for the community, and then this is the site plan, and you can see here how they've got the road, and here they've got the clubhouse and the pool, and the park, and see how they've got parking spaces here to make sure there's enough parking for people who are going to use the pool. Okay. And notice how the site plan is below the logo. That's what yours is going to be. You have your logo, your name, and then a little bit of a mini site plan for you. And I'll show you one more example. You'd see this community has larger lots, but it's got Kind of, the street's kind of just like in one squiggly line, and all of the lots kind of are on either side of it. And uh, this one doesn't have a pool, but it's got a trail that goes around it that you can actually. This has a horse riding trail for horses. Oh, and we just did a nice walking trail, so that would be nice to put on yours a walking trail. Look how big those lots are. They're pretty big. Something to keep in mind if you're doing a walking trail, usually when people like to walk, they want to be in the shade. So you can that specify in your site plan certain trees along the trail to make sure that it's nice and shaded. Oh, that's a good idea. We do have a question, so hold on. Okay, that's a great question. So each community that we build in has different amenities, um, depending on you know what type of person we're trying to sell to. So 
one of our communities, Belmont, is very family friendly. There's a lot of families and kids. So that one has a playground. It's got a kiddie pool plus a larger pool, a clubhouse for like birthday parties, basketball courts, tennis courts, and it even has a dog park. Yeah, and if you wanted to sell it to me, I, I don't need a kiddie pool, but I might want a place that has a workout room and maybe a clubhouse. Yeah, so for example, like the other community that we have with the larger lots, that community we're selling to people who want to who have horses. So that community doesn't necessarily have a kiddie pool, but it has a horse riding trail for people to ride their horses around the community. We also have another community that is for um, not necessarily younger families, but maybe like younger adults, and that has a workout room and a clubhouse for parties, but it doesn't have a playground or a kiddie pool or anything like that. So you have to think about who's going to be living in your community and what type of amenities would they want? Hi, I'm Jada. How many flowers do you usually put around the house site? Okay, that's a great question. We actually put in, uh, on average, about 40 shrubs. So shrubs are like little bushes and um, plants and stuff. And then we'll also have some annual flowers. Annual flowers are flowers that every year need to be replaced, whereas the bushes and shrubs stay all the time. And then we'll also put in one or two trees, it's either like palm trees or magnolia trees. And um, and we have a little plan that shows the landscapers where we want to put and which types. And it's really important, depending on where you live, you want to make sure you buy plants that grow really well in your climate. So Gainesville has a different climate than Coral Springs. So not all the plants that grow in Coral Springs will grow in Gainesville. So you have to make sure you pick plants that will, um, that will thrive in the climate of where your house is located. Uh, my name's India. Um, I actually have a question. Okay. Uh, um, my question is, um, does that house actually have a pool in the back of the community? Does it, have, does it have a pool? Is that what you asked? Yeah. Okay, that the particular house that we have been following does not have a pool in the backyard. The backyard is large enough where you can put a pool in if they wanted to. Um, that particular community, there is a community pool that they can go to. Um, there are a couple people that have their own private pools, but most of the people like to use the large community pool that they share with their neighbors. Your um, I actually have four pools, and um, one wow. goes to nine feet, and one goes to five, and then one goes to like um, I don't know, like it's a kiddie pool, like for little kids, and then it's another one that goes almost like um, um it's much bigger, but I never went to that one. Uh, that's pretty cool that you have those different pools. Oh, yeah. Jacob. Go ahead to read it. Give the book, Jacob. Take the book. Hi, my name is Skyler. What if um when the grass gets shipped, it it's um takes like not it doesn't it doesn't like grow right and it was and it's brown. Oh, that's a good question. And um when we get the grass, it's really important that we. We install it right away, and we also have to water it a lot to make sure that the roots grow into the ground and it stays healthy. Um, so you we really have to make sure that irrigation is working right and the grass gets watered a lot during the first couple weeks. It has happened before where we have gotten grass delivered that was already kind of like dying, and we installed it and it didn't it it didn't get healthy and start turning green. And we had to um, take that grass out and bring new grass in. So you just have to replace it. How many, um, how many kids and adults are going to be living in the house we're seeing right now? Okay, well, it's a really nice young family. It's um, a mother and father, and they have, um, 
I think they have two little kids, younger than you guys, um, who are going to be living in the house. I know they have one girl, and I think they have a baby, too. And you can meet them if you guys go home. You can go on to YouTube. Um, on to, I could show you here. Um, could you go, I could show them. They could go on to my website. I don't know if you have access to it. Um, let's see. Okay. On, our, on my website, also on your class website, there's a link to YouTube. And I'll show you. And um, you can see the videos there. And one of the videos is of the family who bought the house. And they say a quick hello and um, tell you a little bit about themselves. Hi, I'm Kaden. Uh, how many communities have you built houses in? We currently have six communities in Gainesville um, and that we're building houses in right now. Six developments. Yes. And how many square feet is the house? Oh, Ooh, that is a great question. I'm actually going to look it up so I can tell you exactly how many square feet that house is. So the house that um, we are we're following is um, it's a four bedroom, two and a half bathroom house. The total conditioned area, which is all the area that's air conditioned, is 2,120 square feet. This session is the total square feet. Five minutes. Oops. Um, the total square feet of the house under the roof which includes the garage, the front and back porches as well, is 2,760 square feet. Um, Andy, you have another question? Go ahead. Um, it's about the community. How many miles long is the, is the community? Yeah, the development. Oh. Yeah. Uh, that's a really good question. I actually don't know the answer. It's a little bit confusing because the streets kind of curve and wind, so I'm not sure exactly how large it is. Um, but depending on the, but each lot in the community that we were looking at, each lot that the house is on is about 0.15 acres. Okay, and there's over 200 over 200 lots in the community, so it's definitely over 30 acres, the whole community. Whoa. We have our final question for the year, Lori. Okay. How much money was this house you're building? What is the price? The range? The price? Okay, this house um, let's see. The Michael, the name of the floor plan is the Michelangelo, just like the artist. And this house starts at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And then people might add different features to the house, which might make it more expensive. But it starts at two fifty. Lori, I'm going to have to show you um, what they create here. I'm, I'm very excited because they're all excited about making their own development. But I want to thank you. Um, we had a wonderful experience this year watching a house grow. And I know that they're taking whatever that they learned and they're going to use it um, in future, future classes that they go in, right? Yeah. And uh, we'll go home and watch YouTube. And if anyone wants to email you, Lori, on your website, there is a link that they can email you, correct? Yeah, if you go to uh, my website, scoble.com, and I'll show you here. You can email her. Thank you. What you're doing. Okay, so if you go here to the website, www.scoble.com, and you go here to sign up, you can. Um, you can enter in your information, or you can go here to the contact page, and you can write me a little note or question. And um, if you guys are ever in Gainesville visiting any friends or family at UF, 
and you want to see one of the houses or come see the communities, I'd be happy to show you around. Um, and I really had a great time with you guys this year, meeting with you every week, telling you about the house. And I want to see those site plans that you make, so um, I'm sure my mom will show them to me when you guys are finished. All right, everyone, give Lori a wave. Goodbye. Maybe somebody will be working with Lori next year. All right, everyone, have a great summer. Bye, Lori. Speak Bye. to you later. Thank Bye. you.